Hi folks, it's Matthew here from Matthew Across Photography and today for Wednesday Wisdom we're going to do another wee edit. This time we have a picture of Pam's best friend, our lovely dog. And I figured, well, because I'm a portrait photographer I kind of traditionally do any kind of animal, person, entity, living being picture. I just kind of have it ingrained in me to do it as a portrait. So I thought I'd talk about this and edit this picture a little bit just so you can see the very minor changes I would do and a little bit about the photo and stuff. So this is our dog Finn. He is doing a bit of sunbathing in the back garden and whenever a cloud came overhead I took a picture because I knew I'd get really nice light. He is actually backed up against our shed but you wouldn't know because it's just like a white backdrop and I thought I would give it a wee edit. This is like a almost like a traditional you know studio portrait. Anyway. So before we get started, I'm going to duplicate this background, like I always do, just so we have a before and after, and then I'm going to get tore into it. And okay, we'll probably do what I normally do, which is start with the little things that are distracting me. So I'm looking here, I'm seeing that we have kind of a bit of, uh, and it's because he's part collie, he has these weird little long wispy hairs around his ears. Part of me is like, I want to keep them because that's part of what he is and then another part of me is like no they're distracting for me they're distracting away from like his eyes and his face and that should be for me this is you know this kind of eyes and face is the, the central part of the portrait okay there we go that'll do now what else what else is catching my eye okay there's an obvious one that I'm going to do with the there's a tiny wee bit of his orange collar here um, I'm going to get rid of it and then there's another bit of it here I'm going to get rid of those two normally if you could see the whole collar it would be fine but when you can only see a little bit of the collar it's like what's that wee orange thing your eyes are immediately drawn to it um, I don't know if anybody else has this problem but he, he's the same colour as our sofa so we call him invisible stealth dog so we got him a nice bright collar so that we can find him and when, when he's got his eyes closed he just disappears in our house you really can't see him at all so there you go so those are the first wee changes I would have made so this little distraction here and here I'll show you back and forth again so wee bit of uh, around the ear here and here and then this little bit here and this tiny bit you probably didn't notice here what else is distracting me we have some tiny little crumbs or something we have some what I like to call eye boogers if you've ever taken pictures of kids um, any small kids are basically uh, they just manufacture these so you do not see them when you look at your kids or your dog for that matter you just see lovely dog or lovely kids but whenever you get a picture of them it's kind of weird there you go so took those out and that's about it to be honest with you I have his nose is very out of focus I want his lovely big eyes to be the focus of this picture and um, if you look very closely you can see he's sitting in the back garden and he's looking at our back French doors and um, basically I'm looking out the doors taking a picture of him while he is sunbathing this is the bright sky you can see how he's lit and with the soft sort of clouds and stuff so I think that's probably it I might let's see is there anything else catching my eye no mm, no that's about it I think I might I could I could uh, oomph up he is a black dog so he's black so he's very monochromatic so but black emphasizes the colors that is next to it so i could let's have a look at the vibrant slider and let's see i don't need to worry about um in one of the previous videos i talked about the difference between saturation and vibrance doesn't matter because he doesn't have any pink tones so if i do this it will have the same effect as if I do this well actually it seems to be picking up the background yeah it's not actually picking up his eyes so it must be the orange and brown tones in his eyes so it's not picking those up it's not picking up these orange and brown tones <coughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up a wee bit and then I'm actually going to mask his eyes so let's go for about 30% there we go but I don't want the backdrop it's taking on a bit of a warmer tone which I don't like so I'm going to mask this 
and then I'm going to go to uh, layer where is it invert I just use control and I well you can right click on it I believe as well can you right click on it no nope, you can't I just use control and I to invert it I can't remember what the action button is so that's brought, brought it back and then you have to brush so you do B for brush um, or click up on the brush up here and then if you paint white wherever you paint the white is going to bring it back so if I do that you can see this eye is a lot more warm than this eye and that's kind of it I'm going to press X to switch back to white and just take a little bit around to be a bit neater that's it so see just a tiny bit don't, don't go crazy with this kind of stuff because if you do it becomes really obvious um, so let's do oh, so let's do before and after so I will I'm gonna merge these together So this is before, so we had a wee bit orange here, wee bit around the hair, wee bit here, and then this is after. Do you know what, I'm going to actually attempt to get rid of this. Let's see if I can get rid of this and do something with it. Just to see, because there's a wee tiny bit of green in the corner here. So it's drawing my eye. So we can just zap that. Oh man, it added extra bum in or something. That's hilarious. Sometimes it does that. Let's try again. Anything like I can just control and Z to undo. And then try it again. Nope. Not doing it. Let's try just doing a wee bit of green first and see what it does. Because it's actually the green that I've got a bit of. That's better. It was the green that was drawing my attention. I don't care. Now that it's kind of an indistinct grey. Because that's just that wee bit of green there. See if you look now. You see the way the green the color would kind of draw your eye and I'd like it to be white like on the other side here but I'm kind of like nah that's being a bit silly that's too much and um, it doesn't matter that much mm. or it could crop it in you'll notice here that I when I went to take the picture pretty much immediately did the whole standard portrait thing this is a standard portrait thing for me which is to have the eyes on this upper third the rule of thirds is a very classic portrait from literally thousands of years ago people have been painting these portraits for like forever so if i wanted to i could bring this down a little bit and bring this up a little bit make it a more traditional but no i like it i like it the way it was so i'm just gonna leave it it's a little bit off to one side see there but i'm not worried about that that He's off to the left a little bit. He's kind of tilting his head a little bit to the left as well, but I can't like that. So yeah, that's it. Going to keep that. So there you go. There's another one of these um, Wednesday Wisdoms, and it's just kind of portraiture, but yeah, with the dog. So I got down low levels so that I was looking eye to eye with him, and that's what you get this effect rather than sort of looking down on your dog, looking forward at the same eye line as your dog will have like this kind of effect personify your dog a little bit and get maybe a bit more of its character because you're down on its eye level as well okay so there you go hope you like this um as always any suggestions for any more pictures just let me know and i'll catch you next time